Jim Headley has studied this land for 40 years. It's the songbirds that catch his eye. When I go out, for instance, check my cattle and I see a bobolink or grasshopper sparrow, I'll just write down the particular quarter of land that it's in. So when Basin Electric told him they wanted to build wind turbines here, he wondered how it might affect the birds he'd see. I've been paying particular attention with the turbines here because there's been a lot of a lot of things to read out there about uh, disruptive uh, habitat with wind farms. So he's been keeping track. He even hosted a birding tour sponsored by a group called the Grasslands Coalition. Some of them got great pictures. The grasshopper sparrow, it's a really small sparrow that lives in a prairie, the eastern and western kingbird. The bird actually opened its beak and it you, the picture shows the insect free of its beak and the bird captured the insect again. And we've got that picture. The group was made up of ornithologists, professors, government officials, and bird lovers. During their day, the group identified more than 50 species. They've told me that's about as good as they've ever done anywhere, and we have turbines here. The group also found nests with eggs. The next step is, you know, will they hatch out? I think so. I think the rainfall is going to be much more disruptive than any wind turbines because otherwise they wouldn't have nested here probably. Okay. Jim says prairie birds don't fly very high off the ground, 15 feet at most, and the turbines blades are much higher than that. I saw grouse and prairie chicken around a turbine and they lit within 100 feet of a turbine while it was turning. And I thought, if they have a problem with that, why would they land there in the grass? Jim says he'll keep inviting scientists to his land. And in the meantime, he'll keep enjoying the view. At the Crow Lake Wind Project with producer Karen Will, I'm Tracy Battenhausen.